are the guys to, to officially get going in uh, you know another uh, couple weeks closer to basketball season? Well, this is a, a, a different kind of year when you have significantly more new players than inexperienced guys than, than you have experienced guys returning. And they're really experienced because they've been here with us two years. We don't have anybody on the team that's, that's been with us more than two years. But I, li I love these guys. I mean, they're enthusiastic. Uh, they learn. They're quick learners. Uh, they've gotten caught up in the culture. And they believe in themselves and believe in our system. And, and that's, that's been somewhat of a challenge in coaching to get everybody on the same page. So I, I, I feel good about these guys. I, I know they're excited. But I expect some of our first year guys to be a little tad nervous. You know, that's, that's understandable. Uh, but uh, I think they, we have the, the, the type of skills that fit who we are and how we want to play. So I'm looking forward to the start of practice and let's see how, how we can improve, how fast we can improve. Coach, part, part of that to have so many, you know, freshmen last year that got so many key um, minutes, you know, all those guys, sophomores, and to be able to. To, to see them grow on the court against a lot of really good talent, you know, how much better was that for them to add that much more minutes and, and time? On the well, it was a tremendous learning experience for these guys because we had so much adversity. We never knew who we were going to have from game to game. Not to make any excuses, it was it was challenging mentally, physically, and emotionally with that many new guys being put in positions to, to uh, that maybe. Most young guys like that would not have that opportunity. I think that's good. <clears throat> when I look back at the films, I thought some of them uh, did some very good things and, and under some stressful situations. And I think they'll be uh, better able to contribute this year as a result of the experiences that they had last year. Where is this group? I mean, you talked about it coming out of the trip. Where do you think this group is, especially with how many new guys there are ahead of where you are because of the Canada trip? Well, I, I, I don't know what I can honestly say that we are ahead of where we'd like to be, but I think that we're making progress. I mean, and we throw an awful lot of stuff at them, uh, especially new guys. And uh, <clears throat> a couple of guys, newcomers, were a little tad nervous in Canada, uh, understandably so. Um, it, it's the type of read and react system, system that we utilize is a lot more challenging to learn because each time you have a catch the ball, you probably got four decisions you got to, you can make, and you got to make them in point four seconds. I mean, sorry, point five seconds. I mean, you got to read all over the floor, and that's a little more challenging than what they have become accustomed to. Because most of the time, they're the best players on the team that they came from, and so the balls always come to them, and they have to deliver. But in our system, you got three or four reads every time the ball moves. And you got to be able to see the whole floor and make a quick decision. So that alone requires a lot of repetition over and over. And in our system, <clears throat> it's not like running a play where everybody's stationary and everybody goes to a certain spot. You know, you have three or four decisions to make, and it's hard to create those exact angles, those quite those scenarios in practice. So we have to do. We have a lot of repetition. And with a read and react situation, you might get two back doors one day. You might get a back door from the top, a trail back door, uh, and, and uh, you you might get a turn down. So my point is that those things are hard to create. So we have to teach a lot differently. Some of it's dummy it dance, five on five. So it's a process, and and, and and it's more challenging than set offenses. But once we get it down we become a lot more difficult to defend. The guys that did play last year, you know, Matthew and Caleb, Naheem, and some of those guys, how, how valuable has this offseason been for them? There's no question. I, this is the first time I believe I've been on a team where every one of my returners improved and the incoming guys a little bit better, a little farther along than I expected them to be at such an early stage. And that's a good feeling uh, when you uh, coming into the season and you feel good that if we just keep doing what we're doing, keep working, we go, we, we, at some point we'll come together. Coach, part of that, you know, just, you know, it shows that they want to be a part of that buy-in process. It's not like that you didn't know that already, but they want to be a part of that culture and improving and growing, you know, what you guys are doing here. 
<clears throat> I think they see the benefits of everybody playing to each other, sharing the ball and sharing playing time. I think that's just part of, of the way we feel that we have to play. You know, we pick up 94 feet and we switch one through five, which very seldom people do. Most people are paying pack line defense to pick up the top of the key. You know, we deny the wings, we deny the elbows, we switch one through five, and we front the post. That's, that's completely the opposite of what most people believe in. And, and so it's, it's a little more challenging than, uh, than this pack line defense where you contain the dribble and, you know, keep people out of the lane and, and let them shoot over the top. So we, 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 we like what we do, we believe in what we do, and I think our guys have bought in. And I'm looking forward to see, you know, where we are in maybe two or three more, day, four or five more days for practice. Then we'll start being able to scrimmage and kind of figure out where we are. Following up on that, is it gratifying to see the young guys buy into the way you get guys do things and your culture and your system so early? Well, we've had high IQ players, and, and we've had pretty good buy-in because I think our guys believe and they believe in our system, and they think that's the kind of system they want to play in, and it gives them a chance to get better. So I'm, I'm, I feel good that the, the fact, the decisions that they make to come here is with that our system in mind. And so they, they feel like they want to be a part of it. And for us, we try to be very careful not to recruit anyone that that skill set doesn't fit the way we want to play. So and, and most of the time when you are focused on being able to, to make that happen, then more than likely the player's skill set, you'll see that maybe he might be he might fit the way that we want to play. Most of the time when we're recruiting, we're convinced of the guys who are recruiting that they fit the way I want to play. Now, our job is to go co convince them that we fit where they should be, you know, the type of program that they should be playing. What were your <clears throat> impressions of just having four conference games in December, a couple other challenges, you know, Purdue, Florida tournament? You know, you know, from my standpoint, you got to play the season. And whatever the schedule is, you complain about it, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to make a difference. <clears throat> I think that playing tougher opponents early, it uh, generates enthusiasm and focus with your players. And, and I think that it, it could be something good, you know, having to play tough opponents early. Uh, it could be challenging when you as inexperienced as we are, but it also uh, has to be a positive factor in the fact that they know we don't have a whole lot of time to get, to get it right. How have you seen some of your newcomers grow since they've gotten here? I think they've grown in their attitude. I mean, their, their confidence and uh, their, uh, they, they, they've learned faster than what we thought. And, and I think they are growing in confidence where they are, you know, feel good about the decisions that they made and they like playing in the system that, that, we, that we've implemented. Now we have, I'm sure you guys saw what Chuck's release is. We got, we got a couple guys that, unfortunately, have <clears throat> had, we had some injuries uh, <clears throat> with, 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 with Ganey and, uh, and, and, and uh, Jackson. And uh, Bubba has a slight um, hip flexor bruise. And we expect him to be back sometime next week. Uh, but, you know, it, when someone told me once, I didn't want to hear that injury this part of the coaching. <laughs> I, I, I'm beginning to believe that now. <laughs> <clears throat> Coach, I want something that Ira said, just, you know, naming out guys that certainly got a lot of time last year in their first year, you know, with the program. But have you seen the growth from Caleb um, and just what he can provide for you guys? I think Caleb's leadership is growing. I think he feels a little sense of responsibility to, to accept the leadership role. And uh, that's probably a little different than what he's situated, different than the situation he's been in in the past. You know, he's not a very vocal person, but I, I see him emerging as a guy who's looking around saying, well, yeah, I guess I need to step up a little bit with my leadership. And he's, he's been displaying that, you know, we, with, uh, um, with Jackson out, we've had to play him a lot more at the point guard. And, he, and we don't really have a point guard per se, but in certain situations, he now becomes the, the leader on the floor because he has the most experience. Yeah. 
bringing the transfers, you know, you always wonder how it's going to mesh, but like how Darren and Jalen and those guys, how they got along both the new guys. Uh, uh, Jalen Gaines, man, is, is, is special. He's a special defender. He's quick as anybody on the team. He's a big time shot blocker. Very coachable. You know. I believe. Oh, you know, I believe, you know. Just like us. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, his academic credentials, credentials uh, are such that I'd be concerned that he might be smarter than any of us. So <laughs> we, we have to make sure that we explain everything to him. <clears throat> now, Green, um, is, he has to go down as one of the best shooters that we've had in the history of this program. Uh, he's, a, he's a lot bigger, stronger, better defender. He's accepting his role. In fact, I even think that he's he's enhancing his role from what he's done in the past. He's becoming more of a vocal leader as well. Uh, and uh, even though he's only been here a few months, uh, he's fitting in nicely. I have one more question about you know, RJ. Um, you know, bringing him out of the staff. What does he What does he give you again? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> you know. I had the pleasure of getting to know him for seven years. While he was down in Southeast and watching the coach and taking his team to the to the final, I mean, to the final four, and winning the conference championships the way he's, he's done, and uh, he's he's innovative. He's a bright person. He's had a lot of success in, in, in understanding how to relate to players. He's, you know, my staff is, you know, I, I feel like I have the best staff in the country. I have guys who communicate well with our players. Stan and Steve are, are excellent in those areas, and RJ stepped uh, right on in and, 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 and uh, picked up where CY left off. CY was very good for us, did a great job. And I feel like RJ has stepped up and he's taken to an even better level. Uh, and then <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm bringing him in. The conversation went like this call him on the phone. I said, RJ, how you doing? He said, What's up, coach? Call your wife. Uh, ask her if she's ready to come to Tallahassee. I said, yes, sir. Call her wife. He called me back. She, she's on board. I said, I'll call you tonight. I'll give you the terms of the contract. <laughs> 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 and see why. See why I told the players at 3 30 on, um, on, on, on Tuesday. And at 1 30, RJ was introducing himself to the team. So we had a, a very quick. Easy transition. It's been it's been smooth. Uh, I'm happy that uh, CY with Dennis, God, they're one of our soldiers. I think they're gonna do well together, and, uh, and I'm happy with the addition of RJ. He's just he's been a, a, a tremendous help for his brain, a lot of experience, enthusiasm. Uh, another another area of the country that we are, that we're able to tap into from a recruiting standpoint. And he's more of a a uh, uh, national guy. Right? It brings a, a different flavor. So I'm excited. Well,